About developers in Sweden, unfortunately, Tapetry isn't very known and strong brand. Therefore, getting a Tapetry developers in Sweden is pretty hard, as if not almost impossible. So we wanted to lower the entry barrier for the developers to start working with the Tapetry to be able to deliver the code and help us with the project as soon as they start working at Pixland. Yeah, and also, I mean, we love Type 3, and with all respect, I think there was a couple of things missing in, in the Type 3 as a platform, so we added them in our, our T3 kit, and I will show you later on. So regarding the lowering the barrier in Type 3, uh, we, as we all know, there, there are a lot of really great uh, front-end uh, developers uh, around the world, and we want to, of course, hire the best and start working with them as soon as possible. But we felt uh, when front-end developer comes to, to work with the type of tree, he needs to learn a lot of these technologies, new templating engine, and how are, where to find templates, and it can be a little bit frustrating for him to, to start learning when he really wants to deliver as soon as possible, get the best performance. So we'd we decided that we need to somehow separate more the front end and the back end process and how do we develop. So uh, we written some kind of package of scripts which uses automatic systems like Grant and Node.js, which is being run on the front end developer machine, where he can develop his front end independently from the type of tree, and then the HTML files and the JavaScript CSS files will be later on integrated into the type of tree backend uh, with the process how, how we do, did it. So, and the, the really big thing from a, a company perspective with this is that uh, when we separated the front end from the back end, I could hire a front end developer and he's productive day one. I do doesn't need to teach him type of tree. He can work with the tools he knows with front end and just that. So, uh, also, we added a dashboard because one of my biggest problems with, um, with Typo3 and the user interface is that there is nothing communicating to you when you come in. You need to start fiddling around and knowing where to go. Uh, and I just wanted a dashboard that, that could say, uh, here is some news, here is some Google Analytics statistics, here is your common tasks. So we added uh, a dashboard as an extension. And we are getting really uh, great feedback from the community, a lot of ideas. Like uh, yesterday I was talking to this other guy and uh, he said like, what about showing the editors and the, their work in the back end? Like, so what, what are they working with? Which sections of the web page are being re redone, etc." cetera? Uh, luckily we built this new dashboard plugin very flexible, so each extension can register its own widgets, which will then be displayed in this uh, dashboard and can be switched and moved around. And we will show the dashboard later. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah, okay. Um, we built a lot of custom elements um, because um, we, w we wanted to empower the editors more. So we built uh, pre-made accordions, tabs, uh, different dividers, and a lot of uh, cool objects that uh, makes it possible to lay out and design your page um, by yourself. Uh, also, uh, regarding the demo from uh, Benny from the last talk, there is uh, image cropping functions which we built also uh, in our uh, system before. Unfortunately, we are really bad at uh, in sending the features back to the community and, and uh, contributing to the core team. So that's why I decided with this version we will go public and uh, everything will be on GitHub, etc. So uh, hopefully this will al allow us uh, to get these features into community much easier and much faster. Uh, yes, regarding a multi-site and multi-language, we all have customers which have a lot of type of tree uh, sites and within one installations, and on top of that, these sites are using a lot, lot of languages. So we decided that we need to support, of course, in our core uh, multi-site and multi-language packages, and uh, of course they can be com combined and mixed depending if the language variant differs a lot from the original uh, language site. So you can set it up as a different tree, or you can keep it in the same tree and use the multi-language approach from type of tree. So this is the picture of the front-end editing. Um, I will show it later. It's based on the Aloha version 1. 
Yeah. Uh, so there is a newer now. But it really makes the barrier for the editors uh, go down a lot. Because when you show this, like just click on the text and edit it, they will feel like, OK, I can do this. And you don't need. Oh. You don't need to start out by um, showing uh, the back end, the first thing you do, because then you scare them a little bit. So I usually start by showing the inline editing, and then I show them the back end and, and the power of the back end. Uh, also, you can see. No, no. Oh, as, you, as, you can, as you can see in the corner, there is uh, so that you can view uh, it in mobile, on a, on a tablet, and a desktop. So you can work with the responsive. You don't need to sit and drag in your window all the time. Yes, and regarding the testing and quality control process, uh, we have uh, testers dedicated for, for all our projects, and uh, we are starting to work with the aut automated testing with Selenium, which we, of course, want to use in this project. Uh, we want to keep the release hackers very short and uh, similar to the type of the community, even shorter for, for us. And uh, we, of course, do a lot of manual testing, which should allow us to get the quality up high. Regarding the community extension, uh, these are the few we picked we, we really feel like we need. Uh, of course, we are dedicated to contribute back to these extensions if we found, find some uh, improvements, some bugs, and communicate with the authors. Uh, I wasn't able to catch with all of them here, which are in the conference, but I still have one, one day left. So really URL, grid elements, news, Google Map extension, and Meta SEO. So let's uh, take a look at some of um, the pages. Yes, there. Oh, sorry. So this is the, the base package, and it contains a look, but it's a scaled-down look, and you can take away this, this look. We are adopting it to themes now for the new version, of course. Um, and as you can see, when I'm scrolling here, the Aloha editor kicks in uh, on everything that I have uh, possibility to edit. Yeah. Like that. Um, also, we can have the. Uh, we did the cropping, uh, and we will adopt this, of course, to the new version. Uh, but this is our version of the cropping. And reload. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, this um, package contains a lot of um, different features. Like the, here is tabs. Um, and everything we, we made editable for the user. So they can even edit and rearrange the footer. Um, it's really nice. And you can do, you can. You can get the site running in like one day or two days. And if we look here, as you can see, the look of this page is almost the same. I think this project took like eight hours to do. Um, so if the, the client doesn't have a super high budget, you can, you can use this look. And it's, it works. It's responsive in four different sizes. Um, and everything is really properly tested, so you won't get a, a lot of bugs and um, bad feedback from your client. Uh, let's go to the back end and check the dashboard. So um, this is the dashboard, and this is actually a, a little bit old version of it. But it is something that communicates to your client. Um, you have the task center, uh, where you have your common task, like adding news, listing news, uh, and makes it really sh much shorter way to the clicks. Um, uh, less clicks for like adding a news, and they don't need to go into the tree and find the folder, and, and that makes a huge difference for the editor. Also, we we get some simple statistics from 
from uh, Google, Google Analytics, Analytics uh, and uh, our demo site has a lot of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, did I forget something? Huh? Maybe we should uh, show the. So here are a lot of um, special elements that you can uh, use that is a part of our kit. Yeah, as you can see. And there is one more with dividers. And we are really happy about the new feature of Tapestry 7, which allows us the icon API, which allows us to put there the icons much more easier than, than right now. We just used a simple icon for each element. Uh, yeah, I, I want to show you some some um, as some sites we built using this, and some of them are um, really totally different look, and some looks a little bit like the, the beginning. It depends on the budget of the client, of course. So regarding the Visit Sweden, it's organization in Sweden who, which promotes the travel uh, into the Sweden. So they uh, raise the money from all the regions, from all the travel partners, and then they build websites, have run campaigns on the online but also offline, which uh, present uh, the Sweden in the best possible look and uh, get all the visitors to the travel partners. So we built this website uh, with help of our core. It has uh, the special look and feel of Visit Sweden. They have their own design manual, etc. So for this project, we actually took the core and uninstalled the part which implements the design and uh, implemented that part on top of it again because the, the design is quite different compared to, to our core and the project was quite big I think around 1,000 hours uh, so and uh, it still runs and it still runs and runs uh, a new countries are joining uh, countries meaning they target all the markets around Sweden so Denmark Finland Norway and Germany Netherlands so these these countries are joining and moving to towards this platform which is based all on type of tree and uh, as a content repository and as a global uh, managing pl platform for uh, communications. And you built this, you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the Nazar website. It's the website for booking vacations. Uh, they are pretty big in Sweden and the whole like Nordic region. You can only book vi uh, vacations to Turkey and uh, you have all these sectors which are specialized with, with the kids uh, only for uh, couples, uh, etc. Uh, which is then uh, shown on the website based on the colors, etc. Uh, it was really challenging because of all the booking systems uh, when it comes to vacations. You can book all of these add-ons and a uh, really complicated system to book uh, the children and to get all the information they need into the system. S but Type of Tree had, hadn't have any problem with this one. Uh, the only thing we had to at the end do is somehow optimize the caching performance of the site since uh, this was built on 6.2 and uh, the, the website rendering speed wasn't really up to the standard which we feel uh, we needed. So this is another client. Um, that actually is a German company, uh, Willeroy & Bosch, in the, in the bottom. bottom. Um, here we have a quite advanced product database, um, also like a, that is a, a, a normal extension that we use a lot. Um, everything that you see here is also in the bottom, the T3 kit and all those features. And we did some integrations to SAP, I think, also. Uh, yes, I believe in this project we did. And the last one. Uh, here you can see that we, uh, you can actually feel that it is the C3 kit design, but we, we, we gave it some more love. Uh, and I think this, 
this site is uh, quite beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, to, to remake the footer, there is no need to make a super new footer. We just use the same that we use. I mean, to make a footer every time in a new project that takes 10, 20 hours just to make a new footer. We have this footer that we like, use from our T2 kit almost every time, and then just change it a little bit. And it makes us much, much more effective. Hmm? So... Let's continue this. So as I mentioned before, we want to run this project as a community software. Uh, so therefore, we set up this group or account on uh, GitHub uh, named T3Kit. So when you go to that link, you will see around nine repositories, which contains all the tools you need to set it up. Uh, for the developers, there is the Vagrant machines to set up that thing. For the for the non-developers or for like maybe uh, one one man companies uh, we just want to try it out we have a type of tree distribution uh, which is possible to download from the type of tree distribution repository and of course we want your help um, so feel free to contact us uh, to get it running yeah, and right now we have one uh, one team one uh, that is working all the time with the, with this product. So internally we have uh, at Pixelant we have five teams. Four of them are delivering stuff to clients. The fifth team are just working on this base package all the time. So gathering new requests that we evaluate to see if it will fit our. It, would it make sense to build it into the T3 kit and then we do it and then we use that for all the new pr um, projects. Uh, actually, DKD uh, is looking at joining us in development and also Arxia is quite involved in, in, in uh, coming with feedback in using this. Yeah, and uh, of course, we want your help. Um, so please join us. So as I mentioned regarding the roadmap, before we had the stable like, yeah, we will release it soon after the, the stable version of the LTS is being released. Unfortunately, that uh, or la luckily that, that, that won't be needed uh, because that is just around the corner. So our plan is to have uh, like some alpha version re up and ready in the 15th of November and uh, a beta version ready in the 30th of November. So for now, uh, when you download the packages, which I mentioned on GitHub, uh, there is some code there, there are some extensions there, but it's not uh, totally not polished and it's lacking the features which we want to have here. So we would love some questions and some feedback. Thank you very much, Josef and Robert.